Hello and welcome again to the XJet channel on YouTube. And this box here is my box of broken engines. And it gets fuller by the month because I go through a few engines. Now, it's not because they wear out so much as I generally, they, they explode in a thousand pieces because I push some of my engines very, very hard, as you'll see if you watch more of my videos. Now, some of these engines have lasted an awfully long time before they've broken. And perhaps the reason that my engines fail is because I do put a lot of time on them. Now, this one is a Thunder Tiger GP61. -er. Brilliant motor, great value for money, a real powerhouse for a plain bearing 61 size engine. This one, as you can see, not the engine it used to be because I ran this a long, long time. And despite that, it's still got good ABC pinch. Uh, but eventually the crankshaft just couldn't take the strain of spinning props at high RPM and the inevitable uh, hard landing, you might say. And it split, just split like that. So it's not worth fixing it. I mean, the new crank case is worth as much as the motor. So it goes in my box of broken parts. But I would buy another one of these in an instant because they're just such good motors for, for a plane bearing motor. They're very hard to beat. But while I was trawling through my box, I came across one of my favorites from a long time ago. And, and this is it here. I'll just put the front back on so you can see what it's supposed to look like. This is the MDS-61, a Russian engine from the 1980s. Now, as you can see, obviously it's a high performance motor. It has rear exhaust designed to take a tune pipe, uh, front intake, and look at this, look at the transfer ports here. You've got ports there, ports there, and a huge port on the front here, which it enables it to stuff a lot of air and fuel into this cylinder. Uh, I put this engine on my flying trainer and boy, did it move. It was a real performance demon. It was a, one of the most fun planes I've ever flown with this motor. It was fast, it was incredibly fast, much faster than the same model with even a Super Tiger 90 on the front. This thing simply really, really screams. I was looking through the uh, box of damaged and broken engines and I saw this and I remembered this is why it's in there, the crankshaft. See that, that, that used to be the crankshaft, it's half the crankshaft. And look, you see why, it's, see how thin it is there? Where they've drilled the hole for the gas passage, it's left very little metal around the edge. So what happened was I was running this engine with a fairly heavy bolly composite prop, or actually plastic prop. And what happens is every time the piston fired, it put torsional stress on the crankshaft. And being so thin, eventually it just snapped. The crankshaft just snapped, it was flying through the air, clunk, bang, that's it, game over, end of the engine. Now, I learned my lesson from that. And in this type of high performance engine with its very, very stressed crankshaft, you've got to use a really, really small and lightweight prop. Wood is probably the best. So I thought, well, I could fix this engine. I could make a new crankshaft. I've got mill and lathe and all the necessary bits and pieces to make myself a whole new crankshaft. And I could probably sleeve the front housing here because that's got a bit scored where the crankshaft broke. And then I thought, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? This engine only cost me, I think it was 40 or $50. I wonder if they've got any left. I wonder if I could buy another one. And because I'm looking to replace the flying trainer, of course, so what better time to put a new engine in than now. So I thought, I'll go. So I went off to hobbyclub.com where I bought the original engine and I saw they still had the damn things in stock. They've got a few of them left from the a consignment they bought a long time ago. So I ordered it and today, look, it arrived. My brand new MDS-61 high performance engine. Now look at that. That is pornography for engine lovers. Okay, look, it's rough casting. It's not polished or anodized or super shiny like you get in today's motors. And it's got slot head screws which are so old-fashioned it's ridiculous in fact even on the the one that i broke i'd replace those with the cap head screws like the, the hex cap head screws there much better idea and so i'll be doing that to this one as well but just look at that it's a gorgeous piece of metal from the soviet era from well, from 1980s probably after the iron curtain fell um, it's probably why they don't make them anymore uh, but look at this it's got anodized prop driver that's the only blingy bit about it and it's just so, so nice, and I'm just, I can feel the power before I even put fuel in it. So what I've got to do, of course, is this has been sitting in storage for maybe 30 years. It doesn't turn because all the grease, protective grease and things has hardened up. So I'm going to have to pull it apart, strip it right down, clean all that hardened grease off it, reassemble it, lubricate it, replace these horrible 
slotted screws with nice cap head ones and then we'll put it in a model and fly the snot out of it with a very lightweight prop so hopefully I don't end up with another crankshaft that looks like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm expecting that any plane I put this in will be a total rocket like the last one I had. Now if you want one of these motors, I'm not here to sell these motors, in fact I probably shouldn't tell you about it because chances are I'll buy another one. That's such damn good value because I think I paid $50 for this, or I'm not quite sure, $50 or $60 plus shipping. That is a steal for a motor like this. And okay, it's not an OS 46 LA. It won't throttle like an OS 46. It won't start as easily as an OS 46. But you're not buying it because you want a nice engine for your trainer. You're buying it because you want a potent power plant that will actually really honk. And look, it even comes with a glow plug. So stay tuned. I'll do a couple of videos of me putting this through the ringer, cleaning it out, putting it back together. Then we'll stick it in a model. What will we put it in? I don't know. I've got to find a replacement for the poor old flying trainer yet. It may be a Sky Raider Mac 2. That would really move, but I'm scared it might flutter apart because they do flutter a bit, the Sky Raiders. Um, it may be a scratch built. It, who knows? I'm not going to put it in that Super Stunts 40 because that's not really designed for the kind of speed this motor can produce. So if you've got any ideas as to what kind of model I should put this engine in, bearing in mind it's high revs, small prop diameter, so a biplane or something like that's just not going to cut it. We want something fast, something really fast, slick, streamlined, that I can put this in and have a ball, then put a comment on the bottom of this video. If you're in the model shop business and you've got a model you think would be just perfect for this engine, let me know. And if the price is right, I'll buy it, I'll build it, I'll put a video up, and who knows, you may sell a thousand of them. But in the meantime, I'll be coveting this motor. I might put it beside the bed so it's the first thing I see when I wake up in the morning. It's just so, so nice. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the engine strip and rebuild, and then the model build and the first flight with this really, really great motor in it.